Remnants of a wooden box which held the device also had Greek writing on, which gave further tantalizing hints. Using this information, de Sola Price developed a theory and put together a model of how he believed the Antikythera mechanism could have worked. He realized the mechanism was an extremely sophisticated device for calculating the relative movements of the sun and moon. It also seemed to show the days of the month as lunar phases. De Sala Price had established its mechanical complexity and knew that the knowledge required to create such a machine was immense. He believed that at the front of the mechanism a bronze dial showed the date and positions of the sun and moon. A dial at the back would indicate the month, possible within a 12-month year. A further dial at the back seemed to show either a cycle of 47 months or four years. De Sola Price called the mechanism a calendar computer. For anyone in the ancient world, such a device would have been invaluable. To understand the movement of the sun and moon within the heavens was to look into the minds of the gods. Many believed then, as some do today, that the positions of the sun, moon and stars at the time of someone's birth may influence their later life. What complex horoscope software does today, the Antikythera mechanism may have done over two millennia earlier. To the priests and astrologers of the day, this extraordinary machine could have been a window on the gods. But where could such a device have come from? De Sala Price had an extraordinary theory. What if machines like the Antikythera mechanism were part of municipal clocks, powered by the very water clocks that Tisibius had invented? What if they were commonplace in the Hellenistic world? Was this the secret of the Tower of the Winds? Not just a sundial or even a clock, but an automatic model of the movements of the sun and moon within the universe. De Sala Price also suggested that building these machines was what had interested the great Archimedes. Perhaps the Antikythera mechanism was a later copy of one of Archimedes' machines. De Sala Price published his findings in 1974 in an article entitled Gears from the Greeks. The article generated a storm of international interest. In particular, one man was to read that article and to spend the next 30 years pondering on de Sala Price's theory. When Michael Wright from the Science Museum first read the paper, he was immediately fascinated by the notion that the ancient Greeks had complex engineering. Wright decided to go to Athens to examine and re-X-ray the mechanism for himself. We've got this view with several of the pieces put together and it helps me to build up a more complete picture of just how the gear wheels were arranged inside the box before it all fell apart. Although intrigued by de Sala Price's theory of the Antikythera mechanism, Wright believed there was more to the device than de Sala Price had realized. I went back and read uh, gears from the Greeks again and started to find problems with uh, Price's account. That's when I resolved I really had to look at the thing for myself. But for Michael Wright to understand this strange device, he knew he needed to do more than just look at it. He needed to try to build one for himself. After de Sala Price's publication, many academics simply refused to admit that the mechanism could be so old. The complex gearing seemed too modern. 
How could ancient peoples have calculated and precisely cut the fine teeth on each wheel, they asked. Surely this was either a fake or a later machine that just happened to be lost on the site of the ancient wreck. So Wright set to work, determined to prove them wrong. Using only tools similar to those available in the ancient world and with the Greeks' knowledge of geometry, he set out to copy the elaborate gears in his workshop. Measuring and cutting gears with only a pair of compasses, a metal file and a good eye for detail was not going to be easy. But it was possible. After many hours of practice, Wright proved beyond doubt that with patience and skill, it could be done. You can't deny the evidence that the Antikythera mechanism exists. When you look at it closely, it's very accomplished work, both in design and in execution. Why shouldn't the ancient Greeks have done it? We know from translations of his work that Archimedes was familiar with these types of cogs, and now it was the study of these gears that was to help solve yet another mystery involving one of his other mechanical marvels, the mystery of the odometer. We all use odometers every time we get in a car. It's the device which measures the distance we've traveled. But remarkably, this device was in use long, long before cars and was crucial to the development of the Roman Empire. The odometer was said to have been invented by Archimedes whilst he was working for the Roman army. It had been decreed that every road should be marked each mile with a milestone. But Roman roads stretched hundreds of miles, so how could they be accurately measured? By creating a cart that could accurately calculate distance, Archimedes solved the problem and the milestones could be laid out. This accurate measurement of distance would prove crucial in planning troop movements and that gave Rome the edge on her enemies. Archimedes had set the Romans on the path to empire and started a train of events that would ironically lead to his own death. Today, the most famous of Roman roads, the Appian Way, is still marked in places by the milestones that Archimedes' machine laid out. But there is a problem with this apparently simple story. One that Professor André Sleswick from Groningen in Holland would eventually solve with the aid of the ghostly X-ray images of the Antikythera mechanism. As no originals survive, the only clues to how the odometer worked are a few faded drawings in a Renaissance book based on a description of an odometer by a Roman author called Vitruvius. The drawings look fine on paper. The problem is when you try to build them, they don't work. Even Leonardo da Vinci attempted it. These are his sketches of an odometer which he attempted but could not successfully build. Professor Sleswig started to make simple models to see if he could crack the odometer puzzle. Then he developed a quarter-sized model. And this was a model with a difference. Where even Leonardo had failed, Sleswig's model worked. 
The mechanics are simple. As the wheels turn when the vehicle travels, a gear with a single tooth pushes round a huge gear with 400 teeth. Every time the large wheel turns once, a small stone would be automatically dropped into a box below the device. This allowed miles to be measured. After the First Punic War, by decision of the Senate of Rome, milestones had to be placed on all major roads. And that also gives us an idea who the inventor might have been, and in this case, Archimedes. So what was Schleswig's secret? The answer was in the shape of the teeth on the gears. Whilst da Vinci and others had assumed they were square, Schleswig had seen the pointed teeth on X-rays of the Antikythera mechanism. Changing the shape of those teeth made all the difference. Archimedes' odometer, for so long thought of as just an impossible dream, was back and working just as the great man had intended. All thanks to that most mysterious of ancient objects, the Antikythera mechanism. Back in London, it was the mechanism's pointed teeth that Michael Wright had now successfully cut for his working model. Far more complex than the odometer, this would be the most complete model of the Antikythera mechanism ever built. As each gear slotted into place, it soon became clear De Sala Price may have got the details wrong, but his theory was right. The Antikythera mechanism was an automated calculating device, perhaps even a type of computer. You could call this thing a, a computer in the sense that you uh, put in some data and it gives you out related data. An ancient computer is a difficult concept to imagine, yet in many ways that is exactly what the Antikythera mechanism is. It is astounding to compare it with the machine designed by Charles Babbage in the 1830s, which is often cited as the world's first computer and the machine which led to our modern high-tech age. This was the first modern device which could make automatic calculations. The technology is startlingly similar to the Antikythera mechanism, yet there is 2,000 years difference between the two. Wright believes that the Antikythera mechanism was more complex than de Sala Price imagined and most importantly also showed the changing positions of the planets as well as the Sun and the Moon over time. In Wright's model of the mechanism, a knob is turned to set the days and months. Intricate gearing then moves a series of indicators which represent the Sun, Moon and planets. The knob could be turned every day so the position of the planets could be monitored throughout the year or it could be set to a specific date to show their positions at that time. It is, in effect, a mechanical model of the Greek universe. Today, astrologers need a complex computer program to carry out exactly the function of the Antikythera mechanism. So could this machine have been created by Archimedes himself? We know from ancient texts that he built planetaria, but could it be possible he designed this one? It's difficult to make a direct connection between the Antikythera mechanism and Archimedes. What we can say with certainty was the revolution that Archimedes pioneered in mathematics and geometry was necessary for those who then invented the Antikythera mechanism. Without Archimedes and his advances, it's difficult to think that the Antikythera mechanism could have been invented at all. Archimedes' own life was cut short before he could finish his 